Hey everybody, Hugh here. Welcome back. Well, here we are in May. Time to take a look at the courtyard again. Give you a bit of an update. You can see with the courtyard, pl courtyard plenty of colour. It really has, well the staging area here is plenty of colour, it really has transitioned very nicely from the spring bulbs. Um, I would think it's even transitioning very nicely from the spring bulbs, but at the moment um, the summer flowers haven't really kicked in, we're still very much in spring mode. I don't know, can you see smudges there? Head gardener smudge. <laughs> Looking to come out? No smudge. Not at the moment. Anyhow, 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 yeah, a bit of an update on the staging area and how it's looking. Bulbs, or in the most part, bulbs, spring bulbs are gone. The lovely fresh foliage of some of the summer perennials are in place. And uh, for the next few minutes, what I will do is we'll talk about some of the plants here and some of their care but for those of you that watched the first couple of minutes just to get a quick oh well how's things there this is the this is the the quick the quick version and then we'll do the slower go through the pot pond I have to say it's been a real treat this year a real treat this year and you would see back in the January or was it early February where I was rescued from the potager much neglected and uh, very glad that we did that you can see it's covered by an acer there we had the wisteria over it my twitter friends will know that but, uh, transition now through the gate through the courtyard gate It's a wonderful time of year. It's a wonderful, wonderful time of year. Plants are looking at their best now. I often get asked questions along the lines of, oh, this plant hasn't grown or that plant hasn't grown. And I'd always say, wait till May to see how it sprouts, to see if it sprouts, because if, if it's going to shoot up, it'll do it this month. Unless of course it's a winter, the likes of the cyclamen and that, <laughs> which die back at this time of year. Anyway, let's talk. Let's talk about some of the care and some of the tips or hints. And if I have any questions, I'll ask you about them as well. Uh, quite a few acers over the winter. This is one that Judith picked. It's lovely green. It's a dissectum type. We'll be potting these on because as you know, everything is in pots. And the likes of the acers they prefer sort of a neutral to slightly acid soil so we'll be using some of the topsoil bags topsoil that we have and some of the lime free compost sorry i'm bending down to have some coffee so a few of them there to be potted up of course look at that dad's handmade copper bowl that he gave us is not just superb with the bellus Bit of a surprise this year again you'll see in some of the videos where i've been potting them up going ah i like the looks of these but they've even exceeded any of my expectations compared to the reds and again there's fresh compost that was given fresh well fresh compost from the compost bin <laughs> let's be let's be accurate and i mixed it with a little bit of topsoil and a little bit of uh, manure at the time and you can see it's paid lots of dividend lots of dividends of course it is important to deadhead we're back after a few days away so you'll see as i go through the place is pretty raw and there's some deadheading to do there because they are after all bellis or daisies and they will receive themselves spoken a few a wee bit about vine weevil in the past and hookers because we do enjoy our, our hookers here there's another two there one of the advantages of vine weevil and there's not many of them and these are the little weevils that eat the roots again uh, you'll see various videos about them is that this particular one <laughs> was attacked last autumn time and uh, when I went to take out the vine weevil and give them a little hug in other words squash them I found the roots broke into three pieces so I potted them up into three pots 
as you can see there. So uh, the vine weevil helped me divide the hookers. Uh, there's some heathers that we got just after Christmas. They were uh, going at a cheap price. It was like, we'll have some of those. So a lovely bit of furry foliage. Of course, the angel's wings, the Senecio again, that was reduced from 12 euros down to two euros a week between Christmas. And so we just left that in the pot that it was in. And uh, that's an another hooker that was attacked last autumn time or winter time. Didn't check it until no, too late really when a lot of damage was done so it's been fighting to come back but looking well now and of course euphorbia in pots euphorbia is that robbie eh? in pots looking very well just there lovely fresh green foliage of course you have to be careful with those if you are pruning them don't let the sap get on your skin because if the sun hits that sap on your skin it will burn and of course especially don't let it get into your eyes it's a plant that if you go to a prune it it will exact its revenge Pieris forest flame, Tuya orianana, beautiful conifer. Again, uh, just I'm I do like my conifers. Don't have enough of them really, especially the dwarfer varieties. But uh, just smashing, just smashing. Look at that, Hosta sibolii. I think that one is great expectations. Look at a big fat flower bud coming on it. But really, we grow these for their foliage, and it's not just magnificent. Slugs love them. They just love them and they will happily munch away at them until there's nothing left. But you can see some copper wire which was up around the pot has been placed there which tends to keep them away. Tends to. They do find ways around it. And of course Alstromerias Indian somewhere there. I can't remember the name of the pink. Let's see lovely buds on it. We have done some staking on them. And uh, they've responded very well to being potted on. Plenty of fresh flower shoots. Much of the um, perennials and definitely the, the spring bulbs, they'll all be given a feed of tomato food at this time of year. Uh, just to give them a little bit of a boost. Some of the foliage, especially when you're growing in pots and you know, especially if they've been in pots for a couple of years. Although it's nice, organic and homemade compost, it does run out of steam, especially at this time of year when there's a lot of nitrogen required. So I give them tomato feed, um, which doesn't boost the nitrogen per se, but it will green them up nicely and encourage that, that flowering piece. To the front there, you can see that was a bulb where some foxgloves receded. And uh, they're coming along very nicely. Some pansy bowls, campanulas, and uh, that was a piece of jasmine, polyanthum, that we acquired and uh, potting them on. One of the Nandana varieties, I think we have three of them in the garden. And uh, looking very nice there, it has to be said. And some more of the bellis. This time in the window box, uh, they were originally bought for the for the bowl, the copper bowl. But so when we got the pink ones, we went to those, and Judith was saying, "Oh, maybe put them into the terracotta." So, well done, lovely honeysuckle. Climbers and pot stones tends to do well, but that honeysuckle has responded very nicely, indeed. And of course, uh, the very beautiful pot grown over 23 years old wisteria flowering very well there the uppermost buds were hit with that cold weather that we had which was unfortunate but uh, we'll enjoy the lower flowers which were okay the mini red robin there in the background some more bulbs that have self-seeded foxgloves coming through one of the carexes Rosemary, of course, in the stand there behind, can you see? Likes well-drained soil, so being in that little stand, that, that wrought iron metal stand that we acquired, suits it perfectly. Do have to make sure it doesn't dry out, of course, but, you know. Beautiful. Dissectomacer. Red dissectomacer. And uh, 
as we said earlier, the pot pond. The Higginacloa grass, another heather, another Nandina, another hosta, a weeping willow that I got for beside the pond needs to be potted on. Last of the spring daffodils. And of course, So nice to take time out just to enjoy plenty of work to do as I say we were away so you can see all sorts of bowls and containers <laughs> were put under the pots for watering because we are in a spell of dry weather pansies typically they go till about mid-june um, pot them on in I don't know February maybe early March bring them on a little bit and then a superb all spring and a little bit of early summer while we're waiting for some of the summer flowers lovely and again a bit of deadheading a little bit of liquid feeding we get the best out of them a couple of years ago I acquired <laughs> uh, maybe one or two of these bad boys just gives that Mediterranean effect. So again, they were potted on last year. So we'll pot it on again this year and they'll come on. The tree that I love, Cornus controversa, it's developed into a fine specimen. It really has, again in a pot. So it needs to be put it on into a slightly bigger size pot. And again, topsoil based compost. Fatsia japonica. Some of the leaves are looking a little bit pale, so again, pot on a little bit of a liquid feed on the older leaves. And there, uh, a couple more racers. Behind my coffee, there you can see a pot grown hebe. Some more hanging pansies. Above them, a bay tree. If you're watching the Pottager over at the allotments, you'll see where I was talking about. We have a twin of that one which is not doing very well at all, but uh, that one there is doing very nicely. So I'm going to bring the other one home. I rescued Lillum bulb that I found in one of the compost heaps and back around to the staging area again. So it's nice to capture a portrait at this time of year. There is far more going on in the garden, but this is our particular oasis of calm here. <laughs> we'll see a table and chairs will appear very soon here with the parasol where we'll be chilling out. I don't know if we can capture that bird in the bottom there, just behind that red. Yep, there you go. Special guest. Try to keep things as organic and chemical free as possible, especially when we're growing food. Courtyard, as I say, will tomato feed will feature, but apart from that, it's all uh, when we're doing the compost, it's all sort of peat free compost. And well, it's homemade, so it has to be peat free, or mostly peat free because I would have used peat based compost in the past. And as I recycle the compost year after year, there is some. remaining but it's all homemade compost topsoil and bag manure that we use and uh, yeah anyway it's our little oasis of calm naming a few of the flowers and plants that we have and just capturing this moment in time later May in the courtyard with lots to go and do anyway as always thanks very much for watching this is a longer one than usual and I hope you enjoyed do take care of yourselves catch you on the next one God bless for now bye bye